All right, in this video, we're going to take a quick look and see how to quarantine snakes. All right, guys, in this video, we're just going to kind of go through how we quarantine snakes here. Kind of a fitting video based on what everybody's dealing with nowadays. We're all quarantining ourselves. Um, so we're going to go through uh, piece by piece and kind of talk about how we deal with um, quarantining, do you need to quarantine, and how we go about it here at Ectothermic Dungeon. So uh, let's get into some of the nitty gritty. So question number one, do I even have to quarantine? Uh, and that kind of depends. If you have a collection already like we do here, um, or you have a smaller collection, maybe you only have five animals, or maybe you have a couple different species, and you're purchasing another animal and you're going to bring it home, the answer is yes, you definitely want to quarantine that. If you're just getting started and this is your first purchase or you're buying a group of animals, they're all kind of go through quarantine together um, to a degree, especially if they're all coming from the same person. Um, if you're Man, this would be more complicated, but if you're buying multiple animals from different places and they're all coming together, then um, I would still quarantine them kind of together and just be very, very careful about cross-contamination. But here, when we have a larger collection, uh, not large, but larger than a few animals, uh, we definitely quarantine our stuff. And what we're gonna do is um, kind of take a look at how we set up our quarantine, what that looks like for us, how long, why, and all that stuff. So let's take a look at that. All right, the first thing I wanna kind of do is show you how we do it here. Um, we don't typically buy tons and tons of animals at the same time. However, we have had up to like four or five animals that would be in quarantine at the same time. And what I like is to set things up in their own containers. I don't really use a rack system for quarantining. Um, but I'll go through the really basic parts of uh, what we have here um, and let you guys take a look at it. Is we use a, a four inch coupling and this is uh, gonna sit inside the bin and I'll show you the bin and I'll give you the specs on it. But this is gonna hold the water bowl or a deli cup. It'd take a regular 16 ounce deli cup. Um, I have 16 ounce bowls uh, that I have acquired from work. I have a lot of them. And you can see that just drops right in there. It sits nice um, and they can't spill it. I've yet to see them spill it, but it holds water. You can wash these and or throw them away and put new ones in um, when they get really bad. Um, that's what I do. Um, inside of the tub, we use paper towel. I like it because it's white. And one of the big concerns that I have uh, with ball pythons is, is mites picking mites up along the way. It may not have been something at the at the breeder, uh, and it is it is all possible that they could have picked mites up in transit, uh, depending um, if you know if that flight or whatever, or there was other shipments um, that were at the FedEx hub or what have you, and they were close together. I mean, who knows? I have been dropping off animals before and seen other breeders there picking animals up and dropping off stuff shipping. So. Um, just because you know you get an animal and it has mites on it, it very well may not be uh, from the breeder you got it from. So I like to use paper towel. It's stark white, and uh, it, that way, it, you, if there's mites, they're going to crawl off. You're going to see this stuff there. Um, if you use a, a cocoa bedding or something like that, you're never going to see it until it's too late, and you're going to have mites crawling out all over the place. So paper towels. Um, are fantastic for that. Um, this is the tub that we use here and then I'll, I'm gonna go through a little how-to but I wanted you to be able to see this right here. This is the this is the bin. Um, you know we put some extra holes here uh, just for ventilation. You can see that they're on uh, both sides and then the heat pack is right down there on the bottom. So this is a 34 quart sweater box if you will and then we have this here really cheap right off of Amazon it's a thermostat nothing too crazy um, it is a heat mat thermostat um, they use these for uh, growing plants and stuff uh, to get the roots going um, so it is designed for heat mats so uh, that may be 
uh, piece of information um, that is critical because this has not failed for us. We've not had any problems with them. Um, and I have one of those units and then this pad um, we got off of Amazon um, through Reptile Basics uh, so you can get them there. So what I will do on the underside is I'll peel this up and this probe will go between the heat pad and the bottom of the container so that I can dial in my temp and then the probe itself is not inside and it doesn't you know, keep me from being able to clean it really good. Um, so you can still have all your grooves. You don't have to worry about silicone or uh, taping it down or anything like that. It tends to work uh, very good. Uh, uh, we've kept all sizes of animals um, in this from hatchlings. Now, people say the size is not ideal for a hatchling. That's true, it is not ideal, uh, but this is a quarantine period. So this is a very short period of time that we're gonna keep this animal under quarantine. And uh, there'll also be a hide in there. So I'll either make, I have disposable ones that I'll make, or you use the Reptile Basics, uh, the black ones, uh, something dark, opaque, because this is clear. This is gonna let a lot of light in, and that's not gonna be ideal situations for uh, a ball python. So just a couple more things that I wanna talk about that'll really cover uh, the entirety of this setup and then I'll spin the camera around and I'll kind of put this together so you can get a, a good look of what it'll kind of look like inside. Um, but duration, uh, we quarantine here for two months. Um, some people will say that that's not enough because there are some conditions that may take longer to show up. That's true. Um, however, we primarily deal with ball pythons and they're pretty bulletproof for the most part. If they're if they're not well, you can see it usually pretty quickly. The biggest concern that I have and that the reason I'm quarantining is really for mites. Um, and now we're super cautious. And um, when we quarantine, it is another room. There's uh, ideally it would be another building, um, to be honest, but I don't have that luxury um, right now. <clears throat> so the best I can do is I have it in another room um, that's set up. Um, we, we are opening everything, so packages come in, they get opened over there, the animal gets set up, and it'll stay over there. And we like to do for two months. <clears throat> the uh, mite cycle is about a three week period, um, so we would double that, so that's about six weeks. And just to, for an ease of keeping track of time, we do two months from when the animal comes in. Uh, once that two month period is squared away, and we get a good look at that animal, we're gonna make sure they're eating. A lot of times you can get an adult male, if, even older, or not proven adult male, they'll come in, they may not eat right away. They may be off food. You know, we've had circumstances where animals will stay in quarantine until they've had two or three meals and we're comfortable with bringing them into the collection. So um, even though they may not have mites, I wanna make sure they're good and there's no other problems um, with them. One of the last things uh, that I wanted to talk about when you quarantine stuff. So here on feed days, um, those animals still need to eat. So they're either gonna eat on an off day and then we're gonna, you know, wash and, you know, and, and not coming in, not come into the this room here where all the snakes are, um, or we're gonna do everything we need to do here, and then we'll go over to the animals in quarantine and we'll take care of them over there, and then we'll, you know, wash up and we're out. Um, we we don't really come back, you know. It's we're not gonna try to take care of our collection after we've dealt with animals in quarantine. Um, rodents that go over there, uh, stay over there. There's another container that's solely for that room so that they can um, not come back this way and we can keep using those rodents for feeding. Um, so that way, whatever's dealt with over there stays over there and it never comes back this direction. All right, so we're gonna spin around and I'm gonna show you this thing all set up. Don't touch your face in quarantine. That's what they're telling you right now. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. All right, so I'm not gonna go too, too crazy here, but just enough to give you a general idea um, of what the setup is gonna look like. I want it super stark. I don't want a lot of space, a lot of clutter, or a lot of items in here. Um, so depending on the size of the animal, um, this is the type of container that I may use. I haven't cut a hole in this one, but I'll typically cut a hole here and then this will go inside. I have another one that's half size. Uh, they're all being used right now because I also use them in, in regular hides. 
um, and then they'll go over to quarantine. They'll get clean. They'll go over to quarantine, and then once they come, they come in quarantine. They they get thrown away. They're pretty flimsy, um, so once they're using quarantine, they get tossed. But you can see here that you know this is pretty stark. It's not it's not crazy. Um, the only thing I'll say is this is probably on the wrong side. The heat pads over there. So I usually put the hide on the heat side. And this is how the animal is going to live. Um, once they settle in and they start eating, it's great. And then we just keep an eye on them, make sure that, you know, they're not um, going to have mites or any other issues for, you know, two months. And then they come out and they'll move over into the, the main facility. All right, guys, thanks for following along on this video. I just wanted to kind of collectively put all this together. I had done another one um, a while back and it wasn't a standalone. So uh, it, was, it was kind of hard to refer people to because you always have to go through all the other part of the video. So I wanted to do a standalone quarantine video for snakes and how we do it here. And if you have any questions or comments, please write down in the description and we'll get back to you. Description, not the description, in the comment section down below. And any other links that we have for you will be in the description down below. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.